you know, MI6 like a James Bond? Is that real? Hello, good morning, BBs. Good morning, it's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And ooh, ooh. Yeah. Big news. Lots of big news today. So many, so many big news. What are we gonna talk about today? I can do this. Check this out. That's exciting. We're gonna get to the, the official royal announcement, the royal address. That's right. It that is coming from the king. We also have uh, some very exciting uh, news about Pal World. Yeah. Like, yeah, some great news for Pal World. <laughs> some and very Pal silly Pal World news. We have some hot off the presses Star Wars news. That's right. Uh, as well as a, a very lovely, lovely new Xbox you can own. And also a popcorn bucket you can own. That is true. Uh, I, I feel also like popcorn buckets are just, it's too much. They're having a moment. There was the Barbie one, the Dune one. Now this is the Ghostbusters one. We'll show it to you all in a moment. Uh, I'm also gonna tell you why a video game actually can't be made entirely from AI based on real research. It's because AI can't love. And that's why. That's why. That's the Spoilers. secret ingredient. If you, were if you were waiting for that story, you don't have to anymore. Yep, now you can tune out. It's because the AI can't love. But first, you know, before we get into anything about video games, mm -hmm. about movies, we gotta talk about some real world shit. Okay. We gotta talk about this this royal address, this royal announcement. Yeah, ooh. Uh, the royal announcement is here from the king. The monarchy, Yeah. very important, uh, very course, relevant. You may have been here on Friday and seen the interview, of course, with Kate Middleton herself talking about this, but it was time for the rest of the family to officially address it. And for some reason, they're not acknowledging that interview. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it seems strange. Yeah. It seems strange that they would agree to that and then not, uh, and then not, talk about it. But anyway, you know, people are really worried about what's going on with yeah. the royal family. And uh, so they sent out a series of announcements this morning uh -huh. uh, to let us all know what's going on. But I really do feel like even though they're putting out these announcements, yeah. they're not saying much. Uh, like they're I not mean, giving a lot of information to us. Uh, let's let's see what we've got. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, Alex, let's take a look. So uh, the first one, Royal Communications, you're gay. I mean, see, it's like. That told me a lot. For. I wish I'd gotten this a few years ago. For a lot of people, <laughs> I'm sure that's true. This would have been so helpful to me before 2020. Sure. And, and, I, and I guess for a lot of people it's true and uh -huh. or helpful, but yeah. it, it does seem like strangely aggressive the way they're doing it. I don't mm. know. Okay. It I seems mean, like maybe they're not they're not being the most supportive of the royal family. Yeah, Alex, you might want to for these uh, next few shrink that window a little bit so we're not covering it. That would be great, and then we'll we'll get into a few because there's still a few more. Mm. Uh, that's not the only information they put out. You know, yeah. Uh, I, they do get to things that are, I would say, a little more informative. Sure. Um, about the princess and about the happenings of such. Uh, um, this one says uh, royal communications. We didn't disappear the princess. Mm -hmm. Please stop calling and be nice to us. Yeah. Which I think, I don't know, feels a little passive aggressive. Yeah. Seems a little strange. There we go. Yeah, yeah, just keep it going. There we go. All right. Um, I mean, at least they addressed it. Mm-hmm. At least they addressed it. I think that's important. Sure. Uh, here's another one. This one says, uh, it was Ronald Reagan's fault. Now, normally... I would be very into this, except y'all yeah. have Maggie Thatcher. Yeah. Like, it's weird for the royal family to kind of offload that onto us when y'all had Maggie Thatcher at the same right. time. Right, yeah, but a fair target. Uh, sure. You know, most things can can be traced to that. That feels like they're trying to distract us. Yeah. Uh, personally, you and me. Oh, do you think they think because of the interview we're a little too hot on the case? Probably. Uh, demo not just, and maybe it sounds less direct in a British accent. Ew. Oh, it was Ronald Reagan's fault, it was. Hey, oh. You're gay. Oh, pip, pip. Bangers and mash, Bob's your uncle. Yeah. Uh, here's another one that we've got. This one is, uh, your princess is in another castle. I get it. That explains it. I don't know. I feel like I feel like the royal family's about 15 years too late on that one. Yeah? Le yeah, like the meme status on that one. Yeah? I don't know. I know, they could have done your, the, the cake is a lie. That's, that's that true. That would have been worse. They could have. 
It just feels like uh-huh. whoever's in the whoever's in the PR over there at uh, Palace Communications yeah. is wearing like a uh, blow me shirt with like a Nintendo cartridge. Yeah, in it. You from know like what I mean? Spencer's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Feels weird. All right, well, let's check out the next one. Uh, I'd say this one is hot and topical. Uh, mm-hmm. This one is the princess was with my mom in the Amazon researching spiders just before she died, and Madam Web swings onto VOD today. Sony, you got to stop. Sony's spreading that marketing money into weird places. Yeah, I mean. I mean, though, I would say this, like, <laughs> if you're the royal if you're the royal family, it is nice that they're trying to get a little income from yeah. somewhere other than the people. Yeah, I suppose. I I'd guess. rather them take Sony's money than the citizens. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, this one says, whoever is the owner of the white sedan, you left your lights on. Uh, and the email that was attached to this royal communication said, make a trombone noise after. Yeah. Like, they- well, like they didn't add it. Why didn't they put that in there? Yeah, I don't. Do you? Can you spell want want? Want want. Yeah, it would be like a w o m p, right? Womp womp. Yeah. Womp womp. I guess that would just be womp womp womp. Yeah. Uh, the royal family, big SpongeBob fans. No, a lot of people wouldn't know that. Uh, this one says euphoric. Will prob delete. Prob offensive. Real ones recognize that. I'm going to I'm not going to tell you until somebody in the chat can identify what that's from. <laughs> Cuz I know. I know. I know we've got one person that'll be able to identify it at least. Yeah, it's from the royal family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the royal family today. And uh, then, this uh, one is the royal fam- the royal communications. This is us if you even care. Like wow. Yeah. They're just little guys. They are just little guys and we should probably be nice the to the royal royals. family is just tiny little guys. They're just trying their best. All right, we can take it back now. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so do we feel like we gleamed anything about the current disappearance of the princess from this? Yes. Uh, and for but I'm who only not- going to share my information with Scotland Yard. Oh. Or MI6. Okay. Is MI6 real? You know, MI6 like a James Bond? Is that real? I hear Alex typing. Is that, you know, because sometimes we have people that are like the FBI and the CIA in movies. Uh Uh-huh. And it's real. Yeah. Is is an MI6 real? Yeah. MI MI6 is is confirmed real. Good morning, Alex. Good Good morning, morning, Alex. Hello. Thank you for coming in to tell us that. Can you name what is an MI6 for and what is MI1 through 5? An (laughs) MI6 is for collection, analysis, and appropriate dissemination of foreign intelligence. Uh And MI1 through 5 are for um, making sure that British people stay British. Okay. All right. It sounds like they're MI6 their, is their, their CIA. Yeah, yeah. and then they're key, the rest of them are just keeping the real ones real. Yes. Yeah. They make, you have to come in and get your accent checked. That's right. Make nice. sure you put oh. on your toast this morning. <laughs> oh. Do you think Anthony would, would pass the test? Oh. Definitely. Governor. Yeah. It j- just, the accent is just as insufferable. Yeah. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those who didn't get uh, euphoric, will prob delete, prob offensive. That's a Trisha Paytas quote. Uh, the royal family loves Trisha Paytas, especially ever since um, they thought that the baby was, uh, her baby was being reincarnated, mm-hmm. was the queen. I think they still might think so. I think they might think Malibu Barbie Do you know what's might a, actually still be the queen reincarnated. Do you know what's a weird thing? What? I get Trisha Paytas' baby in my head mixed up with the CGI baby from Twilight. That there, makes sense. There's something about them that have them crossed in my brain. Yeah, that's where, where if you ask me to picture Trisha Paytas's baby, uh-huh. I picture the CGI baby from Twilight. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, with its big freaky eyes. Yeah. Yeah. That makes, oh, that's fair. I don't I know. That, it's not unreasonable to me, but I couldn't tell you why. Yeah, I couldn't tell you why either. Yeah. It's like I had a friend who, for some reason, gasoline and fried chicken smelled the same to him. Oh. It was like a something crossed in his receptors. Yeah, like some people have for um, soap and... And celery? It's not celery. It's the garnish oh, one. Oh, cilantro. Cilantro, that's the word. Because I also was thinking celery, and that's why I couldn't get to it. Mm-hmm. And then you said what I was thinking, and I was like, no, we're now we're both wrong. We would go to the gas station, and he would like fill up his car and then get super hungry. <laughs> See, that's there's the that infant baby, but there's also the slightly bigger baby one yeah. that's in a museum now. No, go ba- now go back and forth between the two. I will say those are pretty similar. Yeah, that's the same baby. 
But there's the other one. You know the other one. We all know the other one. We all know that children's tale from the sea. Um, there she is. Yeah, it's when she's a little older. It's this, it's this one. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. The one where Bella's baby looks like you left an American girl's doll on the dashboard. You know? You nicknamed my baby after the Loch Ness Monster? What? I like that when people do Kristen, uh, that when people do her in Twilight, uh -huh. they they basically do uh, a precocious 12 year old from a Cartoon Network series. Yeah. You're just like, what? Yeah, that you, is kind of what she sounded like. You nicknamed my baby after the Loch Ness Monster? Yeah. We gotta, we gotta get recess back. Yeah. You know? That is what she sounded like when she got intense in Twilight. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just talking about this the other day about how like, Kristen Stewart's career trajectory has been so interesting because she was a child actor mm -hmm. and everybody kind of forgot about that when Twilight happened. And now she's happened. not a child actor anymore. Crazy and first step, I know. she should try to stay one. But then everybody forgot about all of that because she was Twilight and mm -hmm. people thought of it as like her first thing, like Twilight for a lot of people. Yeah. And then she was like, I gotta shake this Twilight image. And yeah. you know what did it? It took a long time, but you know what did it? What did it? Coming out. That's what did it. Really, truly, when she came out as gay and yeah. was like, hey, I had to have this kind of like performative relationship with my male co-star, but actually I'm gay. Everybody was like, we can't be mean to Kristen Stewart yeah, we anymore. We actually don't and remember. she's a gay icon. We and actually I love don't that. remember Twilight anymore. Yeah, actually, actually, no, we remember and we love Twilight now. We remember, but like, were you there? It's so weird. Yeah, we love her. So strange. I love this. This is my favorite chat I've ever seen because it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Prince Adam said, Sage is so beautiful. She could have her own stream, LOL. Fun fact, it's a public pl platform. Anyone could. No, no, you have to have a license. <laughs> you have to have a license and be beautiful. <laughs> there's two li There's two licenses you have to have. Hey, you, have to have the, you have to have the Twitch license. Give him my close up. This and then is what you have he wants. to be beautiful this is what he wants. enough. Hey, one, your favorite streamer is never going to fuck you. Two, do any amount of research before you speak. Three, stop speaking. That's it. All right, I had a good time, thank you. I love that, I love that. I love it, God. Also, Prince Adam 76, you're 50. Go to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday, go to work. Go to work, dude. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. My God. Uh. Von Kaiju asks if I'm beautiful enough to be a solo streamer. Of and no, I have my streaming, uh, I have my my streaming permit, which means I need a beautiful person in the stream <laughs> with me. <laughs> and I'm not allowed to stream after dark. <laughs> Jesus but hopefully Christ. in two years. Some people like I just love to picture a man sitting at his computer and being like, the bitches are gonna love this. I'm gonna be drowning in pussy once I tell them they're pretty enough to have their own stream on the internet. You're gorgeous enough to drink water out of a faucet. Wow. What? Okay. You're <laughs> wow. I bet, I bet this is what she's been waiting to hear. You're beautiful enough to have an electric bill. Good what are you saying, tight, bud? Super fucking sick, thank you. What are you, you really, saying? Really thought he ate with that one. Um, uh, eat shit with that one instead. Anyways, our quick little derail. Let's get into everything else that is going on today. Uh, the uh, There's no other royal announcements yet. Not yet. There, there will probably be more. We'll Not yet. <laughs> Permission know. from a, na a man was all I needed. Exactly. All right. Uh, let's talk about this. I'm... Anthony, you were sending me these and I'm pretty freaking excited about it. There was a lot of stuff in here that I was looking at. This is the Planet Hollywood auction. Have y'all seen this? This, I am obsessed with this. Uh, somebody put this in my Discord. Uh, Giggle Loop, thank you for bringing this to everybody's attention in the Discord. Yeah. Planet Hollywood, if you are unfamiliar, was a restaurant started by Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, basically any white guy who had biceps on I didn't screen. Know that. Yeah, and then some restaurant uh, some restaurant tour company and it was all like Hollywood themed eating. Was that is that the same as the hotels? Yeah, that has to be the same. The as Planet the Hollywood Hotel? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're all the same. In but Vegas? I, I believe they sold it all off to some other company. I'm sure. yeah, some yeah, yeah. other company has run it and ran it into the ground cuz it turns out that's just not enough. 
Yep. It turns out eating around posters isn't yeah. enough. But Planet Hollywood used to have yeah. all these things uh, hanging up and around you mm -hmm. when you were eating. And you'd be like, wow, that's some big prop from some, that's E.T. Yeah. from the film E.T. Right. Except like there were a lot of Planet Hollywoods and there aren't a lot of movie props. Uh -huh. And there aren't a lot of movie props that studios are willing to let hang by a deep fat fryer. Sure, fair enough. Um, So they sort of like, they ran out of a lot of props. Right. So they had a bunch of weird stuff. And yeah. what's going on now, is this the restaurant where they were mean to you? Not, well, not on purpose. Not that one. They were not They were not supposed to be, but yes, most of the time. Um, Planet Hollywood was a big deal when it opened, and now nobody cares, and it's closing. So they're liquidating all of their fancy Hollywood memorabilia. And boy, do they have a whole lot of it. It's wild. So Anthony sent me two specifically, which were from Beetlejuice. Yeah. Uh, they had the Maitland's like stretchy heads, yeah. which was so cool. And they were up for $2,600 at the time. I haven't checked back in because there was days left. They were going to absolutely yeah, skyrocket. Uh, the first stuff is over tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got, if you want to show uh, my screen here, Alex, this is everything by uh, how much, how popular they are to be looked at. Wow, and, really? And number one, surprisingly to me, is the weird Dracula muscle armor from Bram Stoker's That's Dracula. That's the most popular. That's the Guys, most popular. Guys, they had popular. Dante's, Dante's Inferno from Beetlejuice. Come on. This is, no, this is it. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Bram Stoker's Dracula, the Vlad the Impaler armor, black yeah. suit Spider-Man. Yeah, which is currently up for 5,500. There's five days left on that, however. So yeah. like, we know anybody knows how to bid waits till the last minute. There's yeah. another Spider-Man up here. These are both Tobey yeah. Maguire's. But number, but number three, mm -hmm. The Jurassic Park, let me get this to a place where you can see it. Yeah. Dennis Nedry, where he hid the dinosaur embryos in the can of Barbasol in yeah. Jurassic Park. Fascinating. $25,000. I can't believe that one's up for 25 grand. I can. Jurassic Park. I get the love for Jurassic Park, but it's just like a rather small item. It is, but it's such a cool and important item. Yeah. I literally remember him opening the can of Barbasol and being like, you snuck dinosaurs in that? Yeah. Like when I was a kid, I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, we do have the Spider-Man 3 Toby suit. Yeah. Only 15 grand. Is it weird that I say only 15 grand? It is when the Barbasol can's 25. But I, Toby Maguire isn't most people's favorite Spider-Man. So there is that. I just feel like, I just feel like it should be more. Uh, and then number five, surprisingly, is Bruce, is, I'm sorry, Bill Murray's, like custom bowling ball from the movie Kingpin. You remember Kingpin? Vaguely. People are extremely into Kingpin. Yeah, I the guess. axe from The Shining makes sense to me. It's that's not at 16 as, it, grand. It's not as cool as the bowling ball from Kingpin though. Apparently, that's for 16 grand. Uh, the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade Grail Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the that's Holy awesome. Grail. Um, this is hilarious. Sylvester Stallone's uh, cryogenically frozen body so From they Demolition have, Man. So they have Sage. Yeah. I remember they had that at the Planet Hollywood in Orlando. Okay. But then I went to another Planet Hollywood. Yeah. And they had it there as well. In this auction, Sage, uh -huh. they have like 10 of these. No way. They have like 10 of these That's frozen, wild. crotchless Stallones. Whoa. Uh, guys, they have the door from the Titanic. They have the door that Jack was floating, uh, that, that Rose was floating well, on. Well, this is interesting. They call it, they say it's Kate Winslet's hero floating wood panel. Yeah. So that means there were multiple floating yes. wood panels uh -huh. and one of them was fancy. If a prop is fancy, that's the hero prop. Yeah, and then the others are backups if yeah. something happens to or it. Or like they're for different or, reasons. Right. Like, uh, like when they do a Batman movie, there's yeah. one cape for close-ups that looks really thick yes. and leathery. Yeah. And then there's one that's really thin yeah. when he's jumping around and Batman. So it moves better or yeah. you don't want to risk something happening to the good one another shot. Uh, uh, that's somebody very saying funny. Flying Squirrel 625 is saying that we skipped over Masters of the Universe. No, we didn't. We right just here. made sure that Prince Adam 76 doesn't get anything out of this today. <laughs> uh, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. Now, I do want to say that the Pulp Fiction motorcycle, uh huh, fit sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, that means the Pulp Fiction motorcycle is going for 
half as much as the bowling ball from Kingpin. Which again, this one's over tomorrow. So like that one's over much sooner. So it'll less probably, than the can of Barbasol. It'll go up, but it's still going to sell for less. Uh, same one day, only six grand on the Bill and Ted's phone booth time machine. Can I tell you? Can I tell you why I think this is? Because people would have to put like find a place to put it. You'd have to find a place to put the Bill and Ted time machine. You'd have to ship it. And same but, with the uh, but the motorcycle. also that's just a regular phone booth. That's not even the mm. that's not even the time machine phone booth yeah. with like the antenna on top. All right, you're buying a phone booth. Here's the Maitlands. They're going. They're for still at twenty six hundred. Is that Sage? Let me ask you yeah. something. Is that little enough money mm -hmm. where you are looking at it and you're going, I have a credit card. I'm an adult with a credit card. I wanted you to know hundred percent yes, hundred percent. I was like, if I if I believed it wouldn't go up. If it was like that's the buy now. Yeah. Yeah. Legitimately. I um, think they're that fucking cool. I think they're that dope. Uh, same Indies Whip. That one's going for thirty grand. Thirty grand with this one's from Temple of Doom. With two days left. Yeah. Uh, Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Uh, the actual robot puppet. Mm -hmm. The Croce robot puppet. No, I love. Yeah. Only two grand right now. Sage. How did you feel when you saw the Hocus Pocus Winifred Sanderson? Grimoire. I, I feel like it's it's priced correctly. It's at fourteen grand right now, fourteen five hundred, and that makes sense. It's incredibly valuable and worth a lot. Uh, that's it's a static book, which means that doesn't open. Yeah, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Pretty I feel like cool. we can't go through everything, so we should start just yeah. kind of scrolling a so, little bit. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to, uh, actually, let's. There are two holy grails. I just want to put out there. Yeah. Here's another holy grail. Yeah, there's a different which one. which really like ruins the illusion. Thanks, uh, Planet Hollywood, but also <laughs> right here. It's a chunk of Los Angeles from Blade Runner. That's cool. Sage. That's very cool. It's only $3,000, Sage. Yeah. A chunk. Yeah. It's a boring chunk, though. It doesn't have, like, the pyramid or anything. Right. Uh, but uh, we've got Han and Carbonite. Han and Carbonite? Han and, and Carbonite's currently at $9,000. Princess Leia's blaster. God. Can I tell you something? This is cool. Han and Carbonite is going for $92.50. Uh-huh. Leia's blaster's going for seventy five grand. Yeah. That's correct. We know where the value is. Yeah. We know now this this prop that's next to it though, Sage, is a very important one. Andrew Garfield's broken spider this broken is, spider man skateboard. Yes, Andrew Garfield's broken spider. This is very important. Yeah. Uh I want you to know that uh -huh. I Tim Geddes and I were texting about this last night. Okay. I saw this. I sent it to him immediately. Yeah. This is only going for six hundred dollars. And Tim and I were like, ah oh, damn. Ah oh, damn. What do we do? Here's the thing. Uh-huh. Once you once you win it, mm -hmm. you have to do something with a broken skateboard. You can put it on your wall. You could put it on your wall or something. But listen, the best thing about this, uh -huh. and here's why I think that the Vlad the Impaler armor is at number one. Yeah, is because we're looking at most viewed. Yeah. Uh, if you want to show this, Alex, a lot of people, cosplayers, builders, mm. prop makers, go to these auctions. Yeah to get the clearest photos of these things that they've ever seen. Yeah. So somebody probably looked at that Vlad the Impaler armor. I looked at mm -hmm. this Peter Parker skateboard stage yeah. for such a long time. Yeah. Because this is the clearest look I've ever had at it. Peter Parker doodled Albert Einstein and DNA strands. Yeah, that makes sense. On his skateboard. Yeah. I saw that and I said, calm down, Sony. Yeah. Guys, he's a nerd. Sony, do you get it? How do we show he's a nerd, but he's also it? like cool? How yeah. do we show that? Yeah. And somebody like Mark Webb, uh -huh. director of The Amazing Spider Man, yeah. looked at that skateboard and said, Good job, art department. That's yeah. it. You're done. It's good. How? How did this happen? Peter Parker is doing homework on his skateboard. He's beautiful minding Sage. Yeah, he is. What the fuck? <laughs> Sony, baby. Maybe Sony Remind always was actually like this. Maybe so we're noticing oh. that Sony has actually always been like this. I'm shocked. Honestly, <laughs> I'm shocked that Sony didn't try to like give Peter Parker an Ibo instead of a skateboard. Yeah. I'm sure it was right around the time where right. they were like, he's a science nerd. Why don't we give him this robot dog? That'd be fun, right? It's a Sony robot dog. Yeah. When he's skating to school, does he like a mini disc player? I don't know. What's his favorite? What's his favorite console? He's got a PSP. I don't know. We're just saying. Probably. I don't know. Just saying. I'm just saying. There's probably a space to put one in there. There's a bunch of incredible things in here. Uh, I personally was also very enticed by the Tales from the Crypt 
uh, Crypt Keeper figure. Yes. Really, really cool. They have the original Jumanji board game. Uh, they have a TIE Fighter display model. I don't know how big that's gonna be, but. What if I told you for only $3,100, you could wake up to Jeff Goldblum as the fly. Well. And you could put it right yeah. over your bed, or I could do it for you while you're sleeping. I love that. And then you would wake up and you'd be like. Blah, blah, blah. If you wanna know how we feel about that, uh, go back on YouTube and look for our monster fucker tier list because we gave in-depth opinions on Jeff Goldblum's The Fly Help and where me. that lands on it. Uh, there's some me. weird shit in here. Uh, there's like a couple of Marilyn Monroe pieces, including one just blown up picture of her nudes, uh, which, hey, everybody, as a reminder, those images were essentially stolen. Yeah. She did those for like a hundred bucks to pay her rent and was promised that they would be private before Hugh Hefner bought the rights to them and printed them as the first Playboy Bunny without her consent. So as a reminder, especially because someone just released uh, the last Playboy Bunny before mm -hmm. Hugh Hefner died, just released a book. Being they like, released Actually, they, you. They let her out of the basement? No, clearly not, <laughs> because she just released a book saying, actually, he wasn't a bad guy, and actually, he was not bad. Uh, everybody, here's your fucking yearly reminder that Hugh Hefner was a monstrous, sick little man, and yeah. should be, uh, everyone should spit on his grave. Hey, there's a real difference between meeting somebody when they're 90 and sick and sitting around and when they are in their 30s and uh, basically stealing everything. It's giving the worst energy that a woman can give, which is, I mean, he didn't do it to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Ick, icky, icky. Uh, so this is all pretty neat. Uh, anybody got a couple of grand to drop on a movie prop? Yeah, come on. <laughs> you, guys, I... uh, you guys oh. dropping any, any grands on movie props? For 10 grand, Sage, for just 10 grand, I can be the Monda Shewans from the fifth element. <laughs> Sage, I could be yeah. one of the weird armadillo boys from space. Yeah, you could. With a key finger. Yeah. $10,000, Sage. God, there's so fucking many pages of this. It's like genuinely unbelievable. What's my secret maximum bid on, on having a suit of armor from the fifth element? I mean, it's at 10. Yeah. Se uh, Why is 700. It secret? Oh, it's just automatically, so you can have a secret bid, so it automatically yeah, it's goes an auction, someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah 700, yeah, okay. thousand? Yeah. Yeah, probably 700,000. I was trying to get to the last page because if this was sorted by popularity, I was curious what the least popular thing was. Yeah. But there's simply too many pages. There's a lot. Like, uh, I'm 26 pages in and I'm still going. It's a lot of stuff. They have the sports almanac from Back to the Future 2. Uh, here's, I found the Maitland's house. I haven't found the uh, the Dante's Inferno, but I did find yeah. the Maitland's house. That's uh, so cool. It's all the little miniatures from Adam Maitland's <sighs> map of the town. They have all of them. I want Dante's Inferno so badly. Dante's Inferno was going for like I want it so three bad. times as much as the Maitland's house. Everybody wants Dante's yeah, Inferno. Yeah, it was rad. Right next uh, to it is the Danny Kaye's Jester outfit from the Court Jester, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. I got to page 34. That's the final page, Anthony. The last things on here, the last row are uh, Rob Schneider's Fergie prisoner jumpsuit from uh, Judge Dredd, the okay. Lost in Space uh, Jeb Walker gold costume ensemble, and Waterworld spears. Just some spears from Waterworld. Just Water some World. spears from Waterworld. Uh, here's Dante's. Here's Dante's Inferno. I found it. Here's Dante's Inferno. God, it's room. so good. Uh, we can take a look at that right here. Uh, and Sage, do you know what it's next to? Huh. The titular mask from the film The Mask. Yeah. I'd, uh, Gizmo, how much is Gizmo going for? Gizmo's 3,700 right now and that's it. What a good boy. That's it. Man, pretty crazy. Hey, the Mrs. Doubtfire suit. What if I came in as Mrs. Doubtfire one day? Hello, dear. Oh, I'm here to watch the children. It's me. <laughs> no, thank you. Mrs. Doubtfire. No, thank you. You can show the suit, Alex. Don't be afraid to show no, the Mrs. Okay. Doubtfire suit. No, it's okay. You don't have suit. to show the suit. Don't be afraid it's to show okay. the Mrs. Doubtfire oh, show it. <laughs> Alex is like, what do I, who Alex? do I? Alex, you don't have to show no, the suit. No, you don't have to, but they you should. They know what it looks like. Yeah, it's but okay. it comes with the mask. No, people don't know Mrs. Doubtfire like this. Show this. This is the nightmare. Show it in your dreams, Alex. This is what Mrs. Doubtfire looks like when she comes to your bed at night like the fly. All right, that's enough of that. Hello! <laughs> Anyways, everybody, uh, that's pretty neat. It's a cool auction. Uh, it's kind of weird to see how much of it was hoarded by Planet Hollywood, I guess. Yeah. And in, in one hand, you're like, ooh, I want this to be something where it's like there is, it is kept, right? Like a museum. Um, but now it's just gonna be, all of these things are just going to random folks now. Yeah. Isn't that kind of odd? I mean, it's very, it's very interesting because mm -hmm. studios for a long time um, did not, 
see the value in keeping a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Like crew, cast and crew would take this stuff home. Yeah. But unless the studio thought they could reuse something. Right. They didn't keep it. Like a lot of um, a lot of the earliest Star Wars stuff mm -hmm. wasn't kept. Right. Because they would like, well, that ship's done. Tear it apart and make it a new ship. Yeah, which makes sense. Uh, but now studios are definitely getting into more of the archival thing. They understand yeah. the value of this stuff on the market. Uh, a lot of this stuff, I think, has was in the collector's market, mm -hmm. or what, or came from as as like donations from pals of the people who started this restaurant. People yeah. who didn't care. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I, I think most of it is going to go into a private collector space where at least people keep it in good condition. Yeah. As opposed to having it just like rotting away somewhere. Yeah. Uh, which. Well, hey, you mentioned Star Wars. I did mention Star Wars. And right as we got started today, there was a little bit of breaking Star Wars news. Uh, we got an announcement and a poster for the Acolyte. Ooh, uh, this it's, poster. It's good. It says, in an age of light, a darkness rises. Uh-huh. Uh, and then it turns into, like, this, this blood spatter on the ground turns into a lightsaber. Uh, we got a date of June 4th, and we uh, got an announcement that the trailer drops tomorrow. I am so excited for the Acolyte. Yeah. Yes. I'm really excited, too. I have been waiting for this one. You know, uh, it's always a bummer because they won't uh, release things on days we have shows. Uh, it's a big bummer. Yeah. But maybe on Wednesday, since we'll be here filming other stuff, we'll do a little reaction for the Patreon since uh, we know it would get uh, fought on YouTube anyways. That's right. You know? So maybe while we're here on Wednesday, we'll record a little reaction for you guys anyways on the Patreon. I This poster? It's amazing. This poster's doing something for me. It's a great, it's a great poster. Very interesting. Um, now, if you are uh, unfamiliar, mm -hmm. Uh, with the acolyte, it's been kind of it's been kind of very yes, hush fam. hush about what it's going to be. Uh huh. Um, but we know that it comes sort of at the end, towards the end of the High Republic. Yeah. And um, ooh, ooh, I'm excited. I'm excited. We do know. Uh, we do know that uh, Jonas, our sweet boy Jonas, mm -hmm. is going to be playing a Jedi Wookie. The first Jedi Wookiee we've ever seen. Ooh. Uh, and Leslie Headland uh, is such a mm -hmm. who is the who is the creator of the show is such a Star Wars fan and encyclopedia. Yeah. She literally started off before she was in Hollywood. She had like teenage Wattpad and and AO3 <laughs> and uh, fanfic.net. Yeah. She was writing like deep Star Wars fanfic. <laughs> She has such a, like, I have only spoken to her for a couple minutes. Yeah. She has a deep knowledge of every single thing in Star Wars. Which is perfect for this kind of show specifically. Yeah. She came apparently to people and were like, hey, here's a list of some of the species and characters that I want to have in this show. And people at Lucasfilm looked at it and were like, I don't remember some of these ones. Yeah. Like, where are some of these ones it from? It gives me like a, it, I've got a little chills about it. Just about like, I don't know, somebody that's that big of a fan of something, mm -hmm. like fucking willing into existence a job for them on that property is so incredible, especially because for most of us um, that grew up with Star Wars, mm -hmm. at the time there wasn't really an active Star Wars to participate in for a long time. Yeah. So like you would think that would probably never be a job for you to like work on a fucking Star Wars show. Like that would be unfathomable if you grew up in a time that there wasn't actively Star Wars I being know. made. If and then you, if, by the time you're there, it's like, oh my God, I can just, I can work on a Star Wars show. Right. But that also, like that That's also so means cool. that you were such a huge fan to be a big enough Star Wars fan to be writing all that stuff during yeah. a time when there was no Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, Speedpunk 1996 is bringing up Gungi from the Clone Wars. Gungi is a, is a Padawan, mm -hmm. not, not a Jedi Knight. We are seeing our first Wookiee Jedi. Yeah. Uh, so take that, everybody. So everybody, be cool. <laughs> I'm stoked by that. I'm very excited. It's the antithesis of the Taika Waititi, sure, I could do a Star Wars. I've never seen one. Yeah. Uh, which I love. I much prefer somebody who's like, actually, I... Hey guys, it's cool to like things. Yeah. We are long past the days of it being cool to look like you don't care. It's it's actually really cool to like things. Yeah. Uh, if you're wondering what has Leslie Headland has worked on in the past, mm -hmm. uh, my favorite thing that she did was Russian Doll. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, Russian Doll was amazing, but she, she's been on a few shows. She was also one of the executive producers of the Heather's TV show that came and went very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's worked on a lot of stuff and I am super, super hyped for this show. And I'm, yeah. I'm very excited to see because it's set in a time period that we have not visually seen yet, yeah. really. We've seen like some flashbacks and some things like that. You know, uh-huh. we've gotten a children's cartoon set in that era. Right. This is the this is going to be yeah. the High Republic. Uh-huh. Live action. Yeah. It's a totally different world and a to- like a totally different galaxy, a totally right. different timeline than we've seen from Star Wars. Really they are cool. they are able to do things. Mm-hmm that they have not done before because they are not beholden to as much canon. Yeah. Right? Like, obviously, there are the High Republic books and the stuff that's been happening, but it's nowhere near as much. No, as, as it being set anytime within, in between the movies, basically. Right. It also just means, like, it also just means, like, we don't have to connect things to everything that we've had to connect things to. I don't just mean in terms of canon, yeah. but I think in terms of, like, fan service and expectation and story. It doesn't story, have to be a Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, like, we don't have to, we don't have to, like, meet Blorbo. Maybe we don't have to go to Tatooine. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe Tatooine doesn't mean shit right now. Yeah. Um, I did have to shout out Scoopy in the live studio audience said, uh, Gunji was only beautiful enough to get his Padawan permit. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Gungi was not allowed to uh, was not allowed to Jedi at night or alone. Yep. Uh, and then we also have a question from Time that said, "Are you two going to be doing reviews with it on Kind of Funny? Probably. Probably. I don't Probably. know. Probably. I don't know. All Tim and I have been talking about is that uh, that Peter Parker skateboard. We haven't had time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, here's what I will say. Usually, when there's a big Star Wars show happening, we'll probably be there. I can text him. Uh, you not right now. I can text him right yeah, now. See, what you, see if you saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just. Yeah, right yeah, now? I'm just gonna right now. You think now. right now? Yeah, I'm just doing it right yeah, now. Yeah, okay, right now without even looking. Yeah. Impressive. I'm just doing it. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, probably. He says he says he wonders if there are gonna be any skateboards in it. Okay. He yeah. can't he can't. We have to wait and we have to wait and find out. Uh can there be zero skywalkers in this one? I would imagine so. I would yeah, given the I, I would hope so. Yeah, given that it's what, a hundred years before the a thousand. Prequel? A thousand? Old Republic is thousands of years uh, ago. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, hey, let's talk about other things that just- Yeah, you can't even walk the sky yet, says Dante. <laughs> we only look up at the sky. Yeah. And go, I wish I could walk that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about another thing that has generations and generations of content and fandom. Let's talk about Doctor Who. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. I was um, right on it. On the night of Eurovision 2024, and thank you to Flatlander and the live studio audience for suggesting the story in the Discord. Uh, on the night of Eurovision, <laughs> Doctor Who is making an explosive return with a double bill on Saturday, May 11th, and they're calling it Hurovision. No, they're not. No, they're not, because I looked at that, and I looked at the way they wrote it, and it's, they're not calling it Hurovision. They're calling it Horrorvision. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually can we show, we show it? it? Yeah. yeah. They're calling Let's it, show them. Uh, it's on stage's screen right now. Yeah. They're calling it Horror Vision. Can we zoom in just a little bit more on Horror Vision night? Uh, I think we're not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we go. Can we just just keep enhancing Sage on Horror Vision night? Yeah. Hey. That was a bold idea to call it Horror Vision. Now, look. There are two schools of thought on this, yeah. Sage. Number one, they had no idea. Number two, they had every fucking idea in the world. Look, uh, a Kotoroku in live studio audience said, really leaning into 15 being a slutty little boy. I'm Excuse not against me. a slutty little doctor. Excuse me. He's a slutty man. He's a slutty man. A time lord. We, we don't really have He's to. He's a slutty, yeah. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. a slutty time lord. Really, the time... Ta- Really, the doctor does exist outside talk, of a gender yeah. binary. If you want to talk about the most fluid person on the planet, yeah, on it's the galaxy, the doctor. It's the, yeah, it's a time lord for sure. Yeah, he's chosen. He's chosen right now to be a he. Yeah, his current pronouns are whore and vision. Yeah, look, I'm here for a slutty little doctor. Don't get me wrong. Same. I am confused by the choice of horovision. Uh, they are trying to say horovision, like Eurovision. I don't think they are. I yeah. think I think they knew immediately. <laughs> I think they knew immediately. Somebody the somebody in the at the table went, "Why don't we call it horovision?" And people wrote it out and they went, "Oh, that's too." They went, "Oi, that's yeah. that's too funny, isn't it?" Anthony's really trying to pass pass that M one through five. It's too funny, <laughs> isn't it? 
Yeah. Isn't it, gov? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruv. Pip. Just one. Imperial. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I I think this is very funny and I love it. I think it's great. I'm all in. I Have also, you watched any of the new Doctor? I did. I saw I saw the first part of the uh, of the return of David Tennant. I, finally, I only saw the first special, and that's it. And I haven't watched any season yet. And I I, I want to. I need to. <sighs> it's not enough time in the day to get caught up on Doctor Who. The live studio audience says my accent isn't good, isn't it? <laughs> it does hurt. And that's coming from the person who did 18 different accents for Effie over the course of two seasons. <laughs> hello, hello. It's a love every day's an holiday with you, Mary Poppins. Kotoroku said, skip a few episodes of Love is Blind. First of all, choke. Second of all, the show's over. Keep up. Third of all, <laughs> no. Third of all, we have uh, we have that aversion thing that ADHD people have where if you tell us to do something, yeah. we will do the opposite like children. Correct. All right. Uh, That's I'm, why I can't stop doing the accent. I know. <laughs> no, it really is a thing. It really is a thing. We both have it. Uh, Anthony has it a lot. And it's it's very involuntary. Oi. Like if you if I tell you not to do anything, like it's impossible for you not to. That's right. <laughs> we know that to be true. That's right. <laughs> Mine is like, if you tell me to do it, I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. If you tell me not to, I don't know if I want to do it more. Yeah. It's also, I just have like, I just have a bit of older brother syndrome too. Yeah, you do. Where it's like, some of it's ADHD and then yeah. some of it is like. Some of it's just I'm, being a little stinker. I'm not, yeah, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. <laughs> yeah. Some of it is just you being a bit of a little stinker. I'm a bit of a little stinker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, folks. I'm very excited to dive back into Doctor Who. Yeah. I'm also very excited to dive back into Doctor Who. Um did you did you finally ever watch the uh the performance from the Oscars, the uh the Ryan Gosling I'm just Ken performance? Yeah. It was pretty good, but I I just loved I just loved seeing Cootie up there. Yeah. I just love seeing him up there. Yeah. Ken and around. Yeah. At the Oscars. Look, it was a great performance. Yeah. It's fun as hell. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's keep going down this uh, road of movies for a little bit. Sure. Uh, as the uh, the King announced to you earlier, Madam Web is already on streaming. Like it just, just jumped. Like there wasn't even they any lead up. They didn't tell anybody. They were just like, it's still in theaters and it's also on streaming. Shut up. It's here. They didn't say a word about it. They were just like, Madam Web, Madam Web tonight, Queen, Madam Web. That was a text from the King. Yeah. Madam Web tonight, Queen. <laughs> yeah. Queen. <laughs> Boy, pit, pit. Uh, yeah, so you can watch Madam Web. Uh, if you, hey, if you wanted to get in on all the fun jokes, but you didn't want to pay for a movie ticket, which is very fair, now you can pirate it. Um, Madam Web, <laughs> I recommend everybody watch Madam Web at yeah. least once. Yeah, absolutely. I recommend you just, it's very I'm rare. I'm going to watch it again. Look, when our government uh -huh. wastes $200 million. Yeah. Or you know, our school systems or our cities, like whatever. When $200 million a company loses a lot of money, yeah. you don't really get to see it. There's no physical representation yeah. of what it's like That's to watch point. $200 million disappear. Yeah, just catch fire. Madam Web is watching $200 million yeah. disappear. You're like every second, you could, I want to have like a little ticking counter in the bottom corner. Yeah. It's just like how much money they've lost. Yeah. Are you gonna watch it again now that it's on streaming? I would imagine I'll, I'll put it on in the background while I do other things. There's so many scenes that I, I just wanna, yeah. I just wanna experience a couple of these moments again. Sage. I wanna host a Madam Web movie night. I want themed snacks. Oh. You know? Wait, what, what will we eat? Spiders. Yep. What That's else? It. That's it. Oh, Balloons. there's gotta be actually a ton of popcorn because those kids won't stop throwing popcorn at each other. That's how kids have fun. Yeah. <laughs> they show that kids are having fun by throwing pop. Yeah, There's yeah. All I can remember about the movie is popcorn, mm -hmm. spiders, balloons. So that's yeah. probably what you'd have to have at uh, the party. And when everyone arrives, I'm just playing toxic on repeat. And you're like, I think this one's going to be a big hit. Yeah. Hey, everybody, you got to watch this Madam Web. Yeah. You got to do it. Uh, I already have my tickets to watch this Ghostbusters. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have expected you to to jump on the Ghostbusters presale. 
I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan and you're surprised by it every time. Well, every time we talk about the Ghostbusters, you're like, really? And this happens every single time. Do you know, but do you know why? It's because we're continually disappointed by the Ghostbusters. I really liked the last Ghostbusters movie. Wait. Yeah, I just hated the adults in it. That was like half the movie. Not really. <laughs> no, it was the new Ghostbusters. They were great. I oh. really liked the last Ghostbusters movie. I think it was great. I love pretty much all the Ghostbusters. I movies. thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty yeah. all right. Literally, I, there is an alert on my stream. Like donation sounds, play the Ghostbusters theme. Sure, and I mean the original Ghostbusters. Yeah. I think is I think is one of God's own perfect films. I can see why you would think so because I hate Bill Murray. Well, that's the thing. I know. You, you I di- know. You dislike Bill Murray. Uh, we came out of the last Ghostbusters because we were watching it and texting. Uh, and we came out of the last Ghostbusters like very confused by a lot of their decisions and by a lot of the things that mm-hmm. they did. And um, I think the adults were trash. I think the kids were phenomenal. I think they made for great new Ghostbusters. Yeah. I think the story was fun. I think it looked fun. Like everything except for like, uh, I'm a weird, creepy prophecy thing. Yeah. Uh, everything that the adults weren't doing was a super fucking fun movie. Yeah. Uh, so overall, I think it was a good movie. Um, anyways, but also I got that AMC A list. I don't pay for movie tickets. That's true. I well, just, but they let you do a pre-list on that? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Damn. It's not like movie pass. Alamo Victory, get your shit together. Yeah. Alamo Victory won't let me pre-order with that. Yeah. Alamo Victory, what's going on? I want to support you. Look, I truly do. I'm not going to simp for AMC by any means. Big evil corporation that takes over independent theaters. I get it. But damn, it's a good deal. It's a great deal even. Yeah. I pay like, what, 20 bucks a month and I can see, I see multiple movies a month now. I didn't see movies before. Well, well how'd you feel about 2016? Answer Loved the call. It. Yeah. Great. I see the flaws with it, yeah. but I love it. I liked it a lot more than most people did too. Yeah. I hated the third act, but I could see Sony all over that third act. Absolutely. That that third act was all Sony all yeah. the time. Uh, Dale Schmilt said, uh, one IMAX ticket covers my monthly fee. Exactly. And I see everything I can. Cause that's the thing. There's also no limit. Okay, on everybody calm do. down. AMC hasn't given us any money. I know, but like you could do IMAX. I do the things all the time. I see a bunch of movies that I'm like, I wasn't going to see that, Yeah. but I don't have to pay for it. See, now I do that with Alamo, I do that with Alamo Victory, but- uh-huh. um, I don't get to do like pre-orders like far in advance. Yeah. And uh, also, you know, there's no IMAX at the Alamo. And they're a little bit further away. They're, they are pretty far away. They're pretty far away. There's only one, uh, I think there's only one Alamo in all of LA, right? Yeah. Uh, so like, you know, there's all of those things. AMCs sure. are everywhere. So you can just be like, ah, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. You know? Uh, I do love, I mean, I should go to see a big screen and a recliner, but um, yeah, I don't know. I I'm, I, I don't mean it in a uh, in a disparaging way no, when, I get I'm, it. when I'm surprised. Yeah. It's just, I think- I think it's one of those things where maybe we were both watching it and kind of texting back and forth mm-hmm. and- I saw be, it in theaters. And being critical, or yeah. I was texting you when I was yeah. watching it, uh, and being critical, but you were being critical as like, I love this, here are the flaws. Yeah. And I was being critical as like, I want to love this, but it's not quite getting there. Yeah, uh, I like it almost made me cry when the kids got into the suits. The kids getting into the suits was a big deal. Like that really did something. I don't know. I think it was really, really sweet. Yeah. I think it was really neat. I think the kids did a great job. I think it was very- uh, I was the thing that the thing that really got me is they really picked uh, whoever whoever the girl is that's playing uh, the main the main character. The, yeah, she's the, from Annabelle. She's from Annabelle. She really looks like she could be Harold Ramis's grandkid. She really does. She looked like Egon. And she's very good. And that was and she's very good. And like seeing her look like Egon, I yeah. was just like, because here's the thing about that movie. The other thing about that movie is the one Ghostbuster you can't bring back is my favorite Ghostbuster. Yeah. I agree with that. You can't bring back Egon. I mean, they, they gave it a go. They, I mean, they did it in a way that I think was respectful. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it, at, but yeah. Um, yeah. My big complaint was Bill Murray. Sure. That was my biggest complaint about that film. He very much came in and was, I mean, that's the other thing is like the Ghostbusters came in at the end, the original Ghostbusters came yeah. in at the end and they were in a different movie. Yeah, they were. They were in a, they were. Yeah, in, we've had like a fun, wholesome adventure movie and then Bill Murray shows up to be a pervert uh, like Bill Murray is one to do. Well, and also they just have this, all of them have their yeah. tone back and forth like they are, like they have. Yeah. Like in the first two Ghostbusters movie. And I was like, this just is sort of not here. the vibe. It doesn't go here. I am excited to see a, a Ray heavy movie though. Mm-hmm. You know, Dan Aykroyd is the is the one who's been trying to keep Ghostbusters alive. Yeah. It was his baby. I know. It was the first thing, not the first thing, but it was one of the first things he ever wrote with Jim, with, with John Belushi. Right. It was supposed to be their Blues Brothers follow-up. Yeah. So they, like, it means a lot to him. Plus he's a weird paranormal guy. 
Yeah. Dan Aykroyd's got a lot of beliefs about the paranormal, and yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, but the loss of, not the loss of, but the lack of Ray yeah. in that movie, you know, the heart of the Ghostbusters. Uh, so having like a movie that really hinges on Ray, mm -hmm. and I love the idea of Ray and Paul, like Paul Rudd's character, the science teacher. Yeah. Like, I think there's gonna be some good, Walter Peck. I want Paul Rudd's character to get better. I would like Paul Rudd to do better in this movie. Underutilized in a lot of ways, Paul Rudd in that movie, in the first Overutilized, line. bad acting. Well, what I mean by underutilized is I mean, they didn't, they didn't give him much as a character. I think usually Paul Rudd is good in things. Paul Rudd yeah. only plays one character and that's Paul Rudd. Yeah, he plays a slightly uh, charming and guy. I like his, I like Paul Rudd. Yeah. I like his one character. Uh, and I'm just sorry. It's hard when a bunch of teenagers are out acting you. Mm -hmm. That's hard. But all of that said, I yes. still really like the movie. Uh, yeah. well, it I mean, did make me tear up and yeah. I am excited for this, but it's we didn't very even rare. get to the news about no, it. No, we'll get, we'll get yeah. to the news, but it's very rare that they do one of these mm -hmm like mini little reboots. Yeah. You know, where it's like, we're gonna go straight to VOD. Yeah. And if it does okay, mm -hmm. maybe you'll get a new one. You know, mm -hmm. they do that a lot. And uh, like the little, oh, we'll do a side boot or like what a quick- What went straight to VOD? Uh, that that last Ghostbusters. No, did Afterlife, did it go to theaters? Yeah, I saw I thought it theaters. It, oh, I thought it happened during the pandemic. Full theater run. Really? Full theater run. Okay, well then never mind. Yeah, yeah, I full withdraw. theater run. Uh, great, great movie. I would draw. The next one is also coming to theaters, which is where you can get the popcorn bucket. This one's not like Dune. It doesn't uh, beg many questions. It, it's just really great. Look at this. I it looks like a Dune, ghost trap. The Dune popcorn bucket doesn't beg questions as much as it begs consent. Because look, it like you closes know? up too. So then when you put it on your shelf, it doesn't look like a popcorn bucket anymore. That's hugely important. Yeah, like when you show the photo of it like specifically closed, um, it's on there. It's so cute. I really like it. Yeah. Uh, I think the Barbie popcorn bucket was really strong. This is again, this is an AMC thing. Yeah, AMC has been doing like really well with these. And um, uh, other theaters are starting to, wait, is that is that an AMC thing? Who's doing, Regal's doing, Regal's doing one now too. Are they? Because it's- This one's definitely an AMC No, thing. yeah, okay. But Regal is doing one now mm -hmm. too because the AMC ones have been so popular. Uh -huh. I saw that Regal was doing one for some, it might be like Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, the D&D bucket was great too. The D&D one was a big D20. It was like a big plastic oh, that's D20. Great. It was really cool. Cause you can do a lot with that when you get Barbie home. Car. Yeah, you can yeah. do a lot with a pla like a big plastic I D20. I had a lot of friends that went just to get the, the bucket. Yeah. They like went back a second time to make sure they could get the bucket. I uh, had that one and I filled it with dice. Yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah. I, I've seen people you, like put a plant in it. I've seen people use it just to hold stuff. Super cute. It's great. Yeah. Uh, I and then there was the, the, dune, the dune -ussy. Yeah. I feel like it started with, um, yeah. It started with uh, theme parks. Yeah. And then movie theaters were like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. we do popcorn. Right. We do more popcorn. Yeah. Why aren't we doing this? Uh, Grumpy Scene makes a good point. Said, I don't think it's worth $40. It's pretty neat. If it was 20, I'd be in. Well, I'd think probably about, be in. Think about the fact that a standard large movie theater popcorn is going to be $20 to begin with yeah. because they overcharge for everything. Yeah. So it's you got to think of it as twenty dollars for the large popcorn and then twenty dollars for a Ghostbusters. Yeah. Trap. It's still too expensive, but I see where it's coming from. Infinite Corp says Regal needs a better pre-roll thing before trying to come for AMC's bucket game. Yeah, they have no because here they have not. They nobody are. does. It's true. Nobody That's just does. AMC, which they just updated. I guess they they edited and updated it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we actually we talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Mayana and I where they're they're the rumor is they're going to release three. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I get there all the way early so I can listen to uh, the weird, really bad interviews with Maria Menounos. Yeah, show up early for Maria Menounos. I do. I really do. I love it. Love to go hang with my bestie Maria Menounos and listen to these terrible interviews. You've God, seen, they're bad they're, interviews. They're so bad. They're so bad. Nobody's prepped for them. Nobody cares. No. It's so wild. They're all in like an empty room with like three pieces of set dressing sitting on like those those set chairs. And then it's like, here's a quick quiz about a movie you're in. And the person's like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. And you, you really do feel like um, they're edited to hell as well. Yeah. Because it's just like, yeah, it's all paid placement. Right. So it's like, just go do it and we'll cut it down to like 48 seconds. Right. Uh, we do love Maria Menounos though. Show up early for me. I have Marinos. no personal opinions on her as an actual person. You can get that t-shirt from Super Yaki that just says show up early for Marina. Really? Marinos. Yeah. That's so funny. Love Super Yaki. Um, so yeah, Ghostbusters, four days, right? Four days till Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah, it's the 21st. Mm -hmm. It's great. I'm super excited. Um, 
Uh, somebody said the Alamo pre-roll is pretty sick, actually. If a Little Mermaid, there were clips of mermaid movie adaptations over the years. That is true. Yeah. Alamo always does cool shit they like do, that. They do fun themed things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's very different than the- uh, <gasps> I didn't see they also have the drinks. <gasps> oh. Oh my God. Look at these. The Stay Puff drinks. Oh my God. Look at them. Oh no. Oh no, you're gonna have to get one. Oh no, they're so cute. Did you see did you see in that uh in the Planet Hollywood auction they had a slimer? Like a full on slimer? Of course they did. I wild. know, twenty dollars for a drink is ridiculous, but the cup is so cute. Here's but like Oh, it's good. This is how they get you. I know because the large drink is already like thirteen dollars. I don't think those, these numbers are correct, but the large drink is already is already seventeen and a half dollars. Yeah, I do think that you're. So <laughs> it's only three dollars more. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the standard? What's the standard cost for a large drink? I was looking. It's for, like ten bucks. I was looking, but it's it's hard. So it's really more just like a tiny little upcharge. It's just it feels like a tiny upcharge, and yeah, then all of a yeah. sudden you're spending a hundred dollars at the concession stand. Right. I'm looking to see if I can order ahead now and if it'll give me the price for it. Yeah, order ahead now. Get a Kung Fu Panda collectible. What do they got for Kung Fu Panda? Let me look at popcorn. Look at popcorn. Uh, so a, a regular size popcorn is 10 bucks. Yeah. So then if you go in and you're you're upgrading, oh no, a large is $10. Okay. Okay. So, so it's $30 extra for the trap. <laughs> that is a lot. That's a lot. I, it depends on what material it's made out of, like what it feels like, how thick the plastic is. I heard it's, it made, out cheap. Of, it's made out of uh, solid magnesium. Wow. Like an old Apple power book. Impressive. Just really built to last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So it's a lot of money, but I, I got to say again, like if I saw that as just like a toy, would I pay $40 for it? Maybe. I might actually. Uh, you and they do have them. I though. can't believe. Have you? Have you and Greg Miller had Ghostbusters discussions? We haven't. You know he drives around San Francisco in an Ecto One, right? I do. Like that's his car. Yeah. Grow up. I didn't know hey, that was. Greg, his, I didn't hey, know that Greg was his daily driver. Greg Miller, can we go to my single? Greg Miller, fucking grow up. You're a father. Okay. I think it's neat. <laughs> I, I, would, I would like to see it. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Should we talk about a little bit of video games? Let's talk about a little bit of video we games. We could talk about a video While game. While we're talking about fancy packaging for video games. Oh. I'd like to discuss this fancy packaging. <laughs> you know, Final Fantasy fourteen. I've heard of it. Uh, did you know that you can uh, you can get a live, you can get a free trial of Final Fantasy fourteen? heaven's word? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's coming to it's coming to Xbox. Yeah. People are losing their minds. I'm so excited. Everybody's like, finally, I can Final Fantasy. Yeah. Uh, and Microsoft is very excited about this too, because it's one of the few uh MMO kind of live service games that's had a lot of staying power mm -hmm. in the last few years. And so Mike Yeah. And so Microsoft wants to show it off, celebrate it <laughs> by giving away one of their fancy Xboxes like they normally do. Can we yeah. take a look at a picture of this fancy Xbox here? Uh -huh. I've got it on my screen. Yeah. Look at this beautiful, fancy Xbox. Mm -hmm. uh, Final Fantasy XIV. God, and it's a Series X, finally. You know how they're always yeah. doing Series S's yeah. for their fancy ones? Right. This one's finally an X. So it's like functional then it's, of like how, you know, what you'd actually need to run the game. Well, hold on. Oh. This is, of course, one of their big giveaways. You got to enter. It's yeah, a contest. Yeah, like the Barbie you know? controllers. Yeah. But, then you yeah, get, yeah. but then you get this. Yeah. And it is not an Xbox. Oh. It just looks like an Xbox. Oh. It actually doesn't, uh, it, it, it's not a working Xbox. <laughs> it's not, uh, you can't play a video game on it. Uh, they do say in the, now this was confusing for people, obviously. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, so everybody's like, why would they give away a non-working Xbox yeah. Series X? So people went rifling through the rules. They send you two Xboxes. They send you one Xbox to play games That's on. That's a normal Xbox? Yeah, and then one, I guess, for when guests come. <laughs> you put it next to the, the fancy shell soap. Yeah. Don't wash your hands with it. Right. Don't play a video game on the fancy Xbox. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so it's really just a thing that looks like an Xbox. That's so funny. My question here is this. Yeah. It's, two, it's twofold. Number one. Why not make it a working Xbox? You've it doesn't look like it has any particularly unique shapes to it, to the actual console itself. No. All of that decorative stuff is on the outside. There's kind of no reason that 
that could not be a working Xbox. Yeah. Maybe it's like a ventilation issue with the stuff around the bottom, but I don't think so. Maybe. It looks Maybe like- Maybe you couldn't really get the disc it in. It looks like you have to kind of like get into the disc drive Design here. Design it wanna, different. If you want to put it up here for a second, Alex, we can Design take a look. Design it different. Um, you can sort of- see where like maybe a full disc doesn't fit in or like yeah. maybe there's no, ventil but you could put ventilation in that pedestal if you wanted. Yeah. You could move those rings a little bit if you wanted. Yeah. If you were tr trying to make a functional Xbox, you just would. So, and so my first question is why not make it a functional Xbox? Thank mm -hmm. you, Alex. Yeah. Uh, my second question is if you can't make a functional Xbox, yeah. why not give away something else? Yeah. Final Fantasy has plenty of cool looking things. Yeah. It's sort of one of the th one of the things it's known for yeah. is that it's pretty cool looking. Yeah. What is going on? What is going on? Why not just give away a, a giant Moogle or something? Hey, now that you're into Final Fantasy, yeah. you gonna play 14? Final Fantasy 14 Heavensward with a free 30 day trial? I'm just saying, uh, he's a Final Fantasy boy now. I'm, I well, I'm not a I'm not a full entire series of Final Fantasy boy. I'm a Final Fantasy VII remake boy for sure. So, same. But I don't I don't know about fourteen. Same. You could play it with me, your friend. I could. There's so many games we could play. Play it with Bestie. We could play. It. There's so many games we could play. But we don't. But we don't. <laughs> but we, we don't. And there's so many that we both already have that we could play. I suppose. I'm just saying. I don't know. They still want you to buy I don't the know. game. Yeah. They still want That's you to buy- That's the case with most games, actually. But it's not the case most with- Most games want you to buy games. Sure, but it's not the yeah. case with most games that want you to pay a monthly fee. It's true. That's all. It's true. That's Fair. all. All right. All right, well, continuing in games mm -hmm. uh, and talking about money in games, actually. Okay. Let's talk about Pal World. Uh, raise your hands if you bought Pal World. Let's see a, a show of hands in the chat for those who bought Pal World. Now, obviously, it was also on Game Pass, so a lot of people yeah. did not actually purchase- the Pal World. I played the busted day one Game Pass version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so like you don't count in that. Absolutely busted and wrecked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got some folks in here. Uh, well, those of you who did have contributed to the hardship the developers of Pal World have faced. Yeah. And that's because it made too much money and they're too small of a studio to know how to work with that much money. Yeah, the problem is if you keep giving them money, they're gonna go, oh no. It's currently estimated uh, that the game has made around $67 million in profit. Profit. Yeah. Uh, the game uh, supposedly cost about $6 million to make, $6.7 million, and it's made about 67 million in profit. It's so funny when you say that the game costs $6.7 million to make. Yeah. I was playing the game, mm -hmm. and that's the exact amount of money I would say it cost. Yeah, seems That's, about right. It seems about right. It feels like, oh, if they only had another $10 million, this would have been a game. Yeah. Uh, but no, apparently they have so much money. And what they're saying is, yes, they're making a lot of money. Uh-huh. Yes, they're making a lot of money. But what the, what they're saying is, we, ex we know that you expect us to put that money back into the game. Uh-huh. Uh, fix some things, update some stuff. Yeah. And we want to do it. We want to do that. But the problem is we're yeah. such a small studio that like, we actually can't make use of all those resources. So here's what you're thinking, right? They would hire more people. And for some reason, the boss of the studio said, no, we're not interested in hiring more people either. What? Well, I think it's, I think it's on a certain level refreshing that there's at least somebody who says, no, we're comfortable overworking people and just making a lot of money. At least they come out and they say it. <laughs> what a lot the of people, fuck? A lot of people will just talk around it. That's unhinged. <laughs> uh, so he said, it's an amount that is too big for a studio of our size to handle. That's right. Uh, Mazzobi clarified that he has no intention of expanding or offering shares in the company. No, God uh, no. Rather, Ew. he wants Pocket Pair to remain small. It's currently 55 people. Mazzobi said that he is open to partnerships or acquisition, but insisted that he has not started talks uh, about a buyout, specifically with Microsoft. Oh, this is the worst type of guy. This the is the worst, worst type, type of, guy. of guy. This is like, oh no, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to expand and we're not going to profit share and we're not going to do anything like that. Uh -huh. But if anybody's reading this, we are extremely profitable and I will take a golden parachute. Correct. <laughs> Absolutely correct. And he's saying to them, don't worry. 
I won't bring on a lot of people that you have to lay off then. No. Uh, we're going to keep it small and just keep all the profits sitting for us. You only have to lay off 55 people. Yeah. And honestly- And you can have it. And honestly, you can do one of those things with 55 people. You're right in that sweet spot where you can bring people on, not lay them off, yeah. but just sort of wall them off from everybody and give yeah. them less and less and less to do right. until you go, well, you know, pocket pair, we were really excited, but their output hasn't been huge and we yeah. don't really know what to do with them. So I guess we're going to have to cut them loose. This was in an interview with Bloomberg uh, where the guy decided to show his whole ass, uh, which was incredibly bold and dumb as hell. And uh, who's surprised that the people who made Pokemon with guns, guns in labor camps uh, turned out to be a bad guy? Listen, if you, oh. if you ever want to know the real deal, don't read video game outlet articles. Look for the Bloomberg. Yeah, the financial and like, outlets. And like the CNBC and yeah. like all those outlets. See what game executives are saying yeah. on business outlets. That's what they really mean. Uh, I think this is absolutely pitiful. I think this is embarrassing. I think this is uh, horrible and stupid. And I am very glad that I didn't spend any money on this game. So that I didn't contribute to the $67 million in profits that uh, this dude refuses to give to people. <laughs> Wow. Nice work, buddy. Who would have thought that the person that brought yeah. my dream of cooking and eating a Pokemon to life mm -hmm. would be a bad person? That's hard to believe. I All know. I wanted to do was eat a Pokemon. Yeah. Does that make me a bad person, Sage? I don't think so. I just want to know. It's like how you're like, if I ever lost a toe or a finger, I would, and they couldn't put it back on, I would have somebody cook that finger or toe. It's not, you said it's like how you're like, I'm not, I would not. You wouldn't? No. If they said we can't put it back on. Yeah, no. You wouldn't want to know? Not even a little. If the option was given to you? Not even slightly. Even if it was something fleshy, like a big toe? Disgusting. Be like a popcorn toe? Get the fuck out of here. Huh. Get out of my face. Nobody, well, nobody, th everybody's saying, everybody's saying no. Nobody thought of it. I'm the weird one. Yes. Alex, if you lost a if you lost a finger or a toe or some sort of appendage, some would you would you want to taste? I don't think so, but I would consider it. What if somebody else? Yeah, what if somebody else lost like it was a friend lost a finger no. or a toe and they were cooking it up? Definitely not. Yeah, so that's worse for you. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like I think friend. I think I'm about equal. Jesus Christ, Anthony. You've never you've never wanted to know what Call a human tastes like. Hey. Call your therapist on this one. Oh, we've talked about it. Okay. Uh, one of the controversies that continually surrounded Pal World throughout its time was, mm. is this AI? How much AI did they use? Right? Right. Uh, and one of the things that we've been saying is, AI is the new scapegoat for bad and lazy art. Yep. Bad and lazy art has existed. It will continue to exist. Uh, Ripoffs have existed mm -hmm. and will continue to exist. Yeah, right. It it doesn't take a lot after uh, after Ninja Turtles comes out for Samurai Pizza Cats to come out. Right. It's not hard. So that aside, uh, I have another AI game story for you. Uh, the game developer Keywords. Now Keywords has done a bunch of ports. They do a lot of like those kind of promotional games, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, decided to to. Do a research project. Now they say this was never a game that we were intending to release. This was sure. a research project for us. Okay. And they decided to see if they could use uh, if they could use AI, generative AI, exclusively and solely to create a two D game. Okay. And what they say they say mm -hmm. now that it's an experiment and they never yeah. meant to sell it. And I can only imagine that's because it failed. Well, we actually <laughs> actually I don't know based on this. So. Based on their takeaway and what they said about it, I, I I expected this to be skeevy. And then I was like, actually, based on their takeaway, it sounds kind of not. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what their th thought process they was sound, going into this. They sound like, you're telling me, they sound like a company that sort of wanted it to fail so they could point out like, hey, yeah. this is where humans need to come in. Right. Which again, like we don't know the moral alignment of this company, mm -hmm. but uh, they said, they identified over 400 tools, evaluating and utilizing those with the best potential to try and generate this video game. Ultimately, utilized bench uh, resource from seven different game development studios as a part of the project, uh, as the tooling was unable to replace talent. I'm so not they were like, can we do it entirely from AI without it pulling from other video games? And the answer was no. 
because they needed to pull things that humans had actually made, which like we all, right. we know that all AI is, you know, an accumulation mm -hmm. of what its learning model is, but this literally had to pull th full things from other games yeah. and it couldn't even generate a new amalgamation of those things. Yeah, I'm not shocked. Uh, you know, when you look at uh, one of the things that people mm -hmm. are using AI for the most, yeah. like the people who are the most excited about it right now yeah. are uh, coders and engineers because mm -hmm. as opposed to having to go online and look up a hundred solutions to a problem that you're having yeah. or see if uh, somebody else has solved it before. Yeah. If you have a large language model mm -hmm. uh, that's been trained on the internet, it's probably been trained on a lot of programming. Yeah. And so you can throw code into an AI and be mm -hmm. like, hey, this isn't working. Yeah. Any idea why this isn't working? Mm -hmm. And a lot of AI language models can throw back some code that at least kind of works or gets you in the right direction. Yeah. But that is code that pre-existed mm -hmm that was written by somebody else, yeah. or in a lot of cases, AI will take two things of code right. and put it together and be like, did this work? And your answer is no. The so, idea of like trying to create something out of whole cloth. Yeah. A game from, here's the type of game we're trying to make. Can mm -hmm. you code it? Right. No, if nobody's made that game before? Correct. No. So what they said was, one of the key learnings was that whilst generative AI may simplify or accelerate certain processes, the best results and quality needed and can only be achieved by experts in their field utilizing generative AI as a new and powerful tool in their creative process. Uh, they're basically saying AI can't replace people in this. Now, there will still be controversy on mm -hmm. even the thesis statement that generative AI could be used as a tool for developers. I personally uh, do think that there are very valid applications of that, and there already are many in active use that sure. people just don't really know about on the yeah. outside of this. Me machine learning, like we've said it a hundred times, mm -hmm. AI, the way yeah. people are talking about it is mostly machine learning, and machine learning is part of everything you do every day. Yeah. Um, so... Throughout it, they talked about how they weren't able to do so for like the voices of the game and how yeah. that was not in a functional way. And pretty much a lot of the creative processes they just learned were not feasible to create a decent game. Here's what I'm going to add. Yet. Yes. What I'm going to add is yet. Mm -hmm. And this is important. It, articles like this are important because yes, they highlight yeah. the value of people and talent. Mm -hmm. um, but we should not look at articles like that and not still try to get labor unions or the government to make sure that there are laws that yeah. protect the people who create things Absolutely. and protect the jobs of the mm -hmm. people that create things. Because a lot of people's favorite thing to say about AI is AI today is the worst it will ever be. Yeah. That is the case with all technology. Yeah. Every day it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. um, the voice acting stuff has started popping up in mobile games yeah. that I've seen a lot. Right. And it's a real bummer because you can tell when they had a person in mm -hmm. and then you can tell when they stopped having the person in okay. and started having the AI talk yeah. for the character. And it is rough and yeah. I hate it. Absolutely. It's happening. So uh, I do think this is interesting. and I think it was interesting for them to put this out and, uh, you know, kind of cautionary. Uh, they are a huge outsourcing studio that has done work on Baldur's Gate 3, Tears of the Kingdom, Alan Wake. Uh, they did like promotional things for Barbie. They had a bunch of stuff. I was looking at their website. Okay. Um, they're they, one of those shadow studios. They are. They're one of those shadow studios. So they have, they have two, it sounds like they have two reasons for wanting to publish this information. Number one, hey, mm -hmm. secondary studios and shadow studios are still important. Don't yeah. think that you can replace us with AI. Sure. And number two, and this is the one that doesn't make a good press release. Mm -hmm. We're a shadow studio. Can we come up with a licensable product or platform mm -hmm. that people can use to do some of the work that we do and we can still charge them? I know that that's, I'm looking at the, Maybe. I'm looking at the pro and the con of this. Yeah. And again, you know we have I mean? nothing to back that up. That is a feeling or opinion on it. Yeah. But that's a feeling and opinion about the good stuff too. Yeah. Like, we don't know what this yeah. company wants to do, but it sounds to me like there are many reasons to run research like this. Yeah. Um, all we have is their statement, mm -hmm. which is, we believe AI can be used to help in a creative's process, but we do not think it can replace it. Uh, looking at their website, we see that um, they did like the port for Guardians of the Galaxy. They did some work with Dead Island 2. Mm -hmm. They have a bunch of stuff on here. Uh, and I think a lot of this would also be, hey, don't come to our studio and ask us if we can just speed it up with entirely with AI. Yeah. Don't come to us and be like, hey, 
Well, can't you just do this with AI? Oh, there's a lot of that too. Cause you know that, um, especially with like a shadow studio like that, they're gonna be like, hey, we can't use AI, but like, can you guys just use AI? I've been, I've been working on something recently where I've, ha I've been having to use a lot of like open source projects or mm -hmm. like, or like small, uh, small plugins for things. Yeah. And one of the things that you'll always <clears throat> see when people want a feature or something that doesn't exist yeah. is they'll go, well, uh, they'll go, oh, well, we can't do that. And it's not really on our roadmap because that's not what this software is for. Mm -hmm. And the person who made the suggestion will be like, well, could you, maybe AI could help. Like maybe you could get like GPT to start, like jumpstart the code for you. Wow. Hey man, stop asking that. Yeah. No. I did think it was interesting. I think, yeah. it, uh, I think it's important to see, to have people who are not really desiring one way or the other mm -hmm. running tests like this. And again, we don't know the moral alignment of this company, but yeah. to have them go in and it's like, I think it was a very valid question. Uh, Comrade Keo was like, I wonder what would have happened if it had made a decent game. That's that's what I wonder too. I wonder that as well. And I have no idea. Um, but if they were really hoping it would, I don't think they would have published their findings in this way. Mm. Right? Like, why would they say that? Well, because right now they make their money off of studios that are trying to replace them with AI. Yeah. So by saying it didn't work, they're like, uh -huh. look, we tried to do it for you because you keep asking us. I know. You're going to need us. But that doesn't sound like somebody who, who then was rooting for it to succeed oh. is my point. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. it does show that probably they didn't go in being like, I really hope this makes a good game. And we hope that this is the direction things are going. Sure. Because if they did, why would they they publish that information? Right. Like nobody knew they were doing this. They, they don't have to say that's anything. The, that's the thing. I think so it, it's I, more beneficial to them to say, Hey, AI can't replace us. Sure. Obviously. Well, yeah. In this in this situation, it's more beneficial. But yeah. like, if it had made a good game, would we have heard from them? I don't know. Or would or would they have just quietly contracted out and used AI to make games? It's a good question. We don't know. And uh, I do assume uh, all big corporations are evil. So probably. Yeah. That's probably. The thing. That's the thing. Is like, uh, even when it comes, even when a study comes from academia. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like a peer reviewed stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah. but who funded the study? What school yeah. did it come from? The thing you know, we were talking about with the TikTok ban. Mm -hmm. Who benefits from me believing this? Uh, but I think it's good. And I, I'm one of those people that genuinely believes we will get to a point where mm -hmm. a computer can do yes. just about all of the creative work, all of any work. Yes. That's that's what we made them for. Right. Uh, I don't think it's as close as a lot of the people who are very bullish on AI want it to be. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's as much of a scam as like the NFT crypto thing. Yeah. But I do think... Right now, there are a lot of scammers that want you to believe it's closer than it is. It's really hard because it's like, you know, when you're just like, I got to worry about so many things in the world. And also, like, we just found out that, um, like, private equity companies own already 40 percent and they were only, uh, like, anticipating to own 20 percent mm -hmm. of all single family homes in America by this point, And yep. they were still planning on owning all of them by 2030. Yep. So uh, thank goodness we're at for a double. Thank goodness for the coronavirus, they said. We're at a double <laughs> on that. So like, you know, of all the things that we're worrying about moving forward, it's just like, damn, that's a lot of things. Well, that's the thing is we we expected by the time the computers were able to do our job for us, uh -huh. the idea was we would be in a society that was chill enough yeah. that we wouldn't need to work anyway. Yeah. Because we'd understand that the computers could do it and we could all just live comfortable lives. UBI, my friends. But um, no, it turns out we've gone the opposite way. Yep. UBI. Anyways, uh, shows that are not using any AI voice actors just mm -hmm. announced the cast of the Among Us animated series. That's right. We got this, uh, they announced this over the weekend or at the end of last week. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that was shy, like, surprising to me, it was immediately uh -huh. Elijah Wood as Green. Yeah. Like, that's, that's what's funny about this show is it's like, this person is playing red. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they got a pretty star-studded cast. They got Randall Park. Yvette Nicole Brown, Elijah Wood, and Ashley Johnson. Man, that's so good. The series that is a stacked cast. Um, it's also uh, going to be produced by uh, mm -hmm. local heroes, Titmouse. Yeah, who we absolutely love. Titmouse, you uh, you probably know from a lot of Adult Swim stuff, mm -hmm. from Big Mouth, and of course from the Critical Role cartoon. Yeah. So and they're we working like them. directly with uh, the developers of Among Us, Inner Sloth. Uh, to make this show. And I think it's going to be fucking adorable. I think it's going to be cute. Now, Infinite Corpse says, Elijah Wood is the imposter calling it now. <laughs> now, here's my question. Yeah. Is this a show where there is only one imposter mm -hmm. or is this a show that's kind of like an adult swim thing mm -hmm. where every week 
it's a different version of reality, you yeah. know, where somebody different is the imposter every week and they're self-contained weird stories. Well, here's what we have right now. We yeah. have the descriptions of the characters, mm -hmm. okay? Which is, uh, Park will voice Red, the captain of the spaceship the crew the, work, the, the crew works on, is described as a people pleaser, a blowhard, who failed upwards. And that's Randall Park. Yeah. Uh, Ashley Johnson will voice Purple, the ship's chief of security, who approaches situations with a suspicion and sarcasm. Ooh, I like I like Ashley Johnson as security because that puts me in the mind of like a Tasha Yar. Yeah. You know, from Next Gen. I think that's very good. Uh, Yvette Nicole Brown is set to play Orange, a spineless corporate shill who works for the company's HR and will fire a person over email. God, that's so perfect for her <laughs> voice too. And lastly, Elijah Wood will be green, an unpaid intern who's just happy to be there and gets paid in pizza. Ugh. I think this Perfect. is gonna be cute. Perfect. I think this is gonna be adorable. I I actually really like this. Yeah. You know, Inner Sloth is is one of those studios where they hit that like amazing level of success. Yeah. Unlike Pocket Pair, uh, who hit an amazing level of success and has been so smart mm -hmm. about their IP and their community. Yeah. And um and every decision they've been making. Yeah. Like they know, they go they go with their heart and they know what's right. Yeah. Um, it's very cool to see. Uh, I feel the same way about the vampire survivors people. Yeah. Where it's just like, oops, I accidentally made a billion dollars. How do I do the best with it? I love that. Yeah. I think it's really great. I think that's super fun. Uh, this series does not have a streaming service attached to it yet. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, at least nothing that is solidified and announced. So right mm -hmm. now we don't know where it's going and we have no release window for it, but we do have a cast. And I do assume with that kind of cast, it is probably not going to be hard to make a deal with a streaming service. Yeah. They might at this point be announcing to have the best leverage when negotiating with these streaming services. Yeah, this sounds to me like they were, they knew that they had something great and they yeah. were getting lowballed. Yeah. And so they were like, okay, well, let's remind <laughs> you how big a property yeah, this is. Yeah, give us a minute. Yeah. Oh, you don't, oh, you don't want to give us what we want? Okay, let me just remind you how the entire world loves this game. Yeah. Uh, let's go Let's go. just see who we could get real quick. Uh, how's this? How's this cast for you? I love it every time. Come back to the table with a new number. I love it every time Elijah Wood winds up in a gaming thing. Yeah. Because you know he's just such a big gaming dork. Yeah. It makes me very happy. I also love Elijah Wood in, in all animated stuff. Yeah, but I feel like he's very easy to approach for something like this. Yeah. Where it's like, Hey man, you know the video game? He's like, yeah, I know the video yeah, game. I know the video game. I know the video game. I'm familiar. I'm familiar with that. Yeah. I feel like Ash Ashley and Yvette are the same way. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, we're aware of the video game. Yeah. We like it. I also feel like when anybody is doing anything that needs voice actors, mm -hmm. they all go to Ashley. Yes. <laughs> like it's just, or did you make something if Ashley Johnson didn't did have a voice in it? You need a, you need a voice? Have you called? She's the voice. Have you called, have you called Troy and Ashley? Yeah. Those are the voices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the ones, the voices. Yeah. Uh, it's great. This is very exciting. Uh, so of course, no no timeline yet as there's not even an outlet, but something to keep up with for sure. Yeah. Um, hey, let's oh. talk about more video games. Okay, so this is the last thing we got time for. Oh no, the last thing. Yeah, it's the last thing. Oh boy, we better pick, we better pick it's 10, right 10, 27, then. my friend. Okay. In well, fact, we're already out of time. Oh, geez. Well then let me just say this. Really quickly, uh, if you have an original Xbox, mm -hmm. you may be familiar with Insignia. Insignia is a team that has created uh, a replacement for Xbox Live. When mm -hmm. your Xbox tries to connect to the internet, yeah. you can connect it to Insignia and they have replaced basically all Xbox Live functionality. Huh? They just announced that they have brought Halo 2 servers online for everyone playing Halo 2 on an Xbox. Oh shit. Ooh. Oh shit! Maybe that's Ooh. the game we play together. I'll play some Halo Two. I'll play you. some Halo Two. I'll play some Halo Two. I had an original. I think I still have my original Xbox. Mm -hmm. If I do, I gotta mod it. I gotta put a new hard drive in it. Oh boy, a new project. <laughs> a new project, so I can play Halo Two. I think I only have back to my 360. Yeah. I don't think I have my original Xbox. Hmm. 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 Oh, well. I don't know if it works on the 360, but. It's worth trying out. If you have an original Xbox, uh, go ahead and check on Insignia. You can also, if you have uh, an Xbox emulator mm -hmm. uh, that you want to play the game on, the original version of the game. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't just play it on the PC, but if you wanted to play yeah. it on the Xbox, yeah. you can. You can connect to Insignia through that. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, that's all of the show that we have time for. Thank you so much for joining us today. We do the show Monday and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. That's the mm -hmm. first time I've had to say it. It feels Ooh. weird. Yeah. 
It feels weird, right? Yeah, it feels weird. But don't worry, just because we're not uh, on on Wednesdays does mm-hmm. not mean that there aren't plans. We have some uh, some fun content coming your way that yeah. hopefully you will hopefully you will think is more than enough to replace the Wednesday show, and we think that you will. We're making cool stuff, and we're still experimenting and figuring it out right now, so we appreciate you bearing with us. If you like what we do and you want to help us keep making more cool stuff, check out patreon.com slash pixel circus. That is where you can support, uh, and for $5 a month, you get a bonus clip from It's Too Early, Every week. Every week? Every week. That's so many clips. We've even got bonus bonus content coming soon. A bonus bonus? We've got bonus bonus content A Frankie coming Jonas soon. of clips? Yeah. Wow. So check that out. You also get access to things like the Pixel Pod. Mm-hmm. You can get access to a bunch of other cool stuff that we're doing. We're doing a lot more content over on the Patreon these days, so we hope you will check it out. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, letting us know what you thought of any of the stories that we talked about today. Give us your opinions. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, we really appreciate it when you uh, share when the show goes live, when you just tell a friend about the show that you think mm-hmm. will enjoy it. And uh, we love it when you join the Discord and you hang out with the other BBs there, uh, sharing stories. Uh, Flatlander73, I believe, mm-hmm. submitted the uh, the Hurovision yeah, story. Yeah, we shouted out Flatlander. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple of stories that we pulled from the Discord today, and we're very appreciative. Thank you. Uh, thank you also for tweeting out to Obi. Mr. Pile Driver, we appreciate you so very much for tweeting when the show went live today. Yeah, uh, there were also a few others. I apologize, I'm not saying them all, but those were just the quote retweets, and I'm just get just thank you. Thank you very just much. Me a quick thank you, uh, and of course. A very special thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that these people are better or more beloved than anybody else, but to the people that give us money. It's very cool of you when you do. We appreciate it. We are an independent network and you make it possible to do what we do. We're going to go through and we're going to thank everybody that did that live during the broadcast on Twitch here. However, before we do that, Anthony, where else can they go and support you? Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet at A Carboni, except for here on Twitch where I'm at Anthony Carboni. And we are playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. We're jumping back in tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so be sure to follow me. I am falling in love with Final Fantasy and I don't know who I am anymore. Whoa. You can find me on the internet everywhere at Not Sage. I stream on my channel Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and I am on a very intense Disney Dreamlight Valley kick right now. I spent two hours trying to find worms on Saturday. That sounds right. Yeah. How about you, Alex? Hello, hello. Uh, you can find me on the internet uh, at Twitter at Alder underscore Mancy, but I want to give a little shout out to my partner, Sarah. They just started streaming again. Um, you probably see them in chat, but there, Sarah is coffee on Twitch and they're going to be doing some morning streams before it's too early. Yay. We love Sarah we love and Sarah. Sarah raided in this morning and thank you so much uh, to the mods in the chat. Could we please have a shout out for Sarah's coffee? Yeah. We would love that very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank all you right. to the mods as well, just in general. So true. We love the mods. We love and appreciate you all so very much. Thank you once again for spending your morning with us, and we will see you on Friday. Bye, BBs. Bye.